The souls of the saints are rejoiced in heaven. The saints who followed the footsteps of Christ and sins for love of him, they shed their blood. They now exalt with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate uh, the memorial of Saints Cosmos and Damien. And as we do so, let us together acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May you be magnified, O Lord, by the revered memory of your saints Cosmos and Damien, for with providence beyond words you have conferred on them everlasting glory, and on us your unfailing help. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? and that there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil. But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it for nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him in his family and all that he has with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock are spread over the land. But now... Put forth your hand and touch anything that he has, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand upon his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine, In the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing, excuse me, and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabians carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and their shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. 
Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate upon the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful of God. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. From you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from those foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him, because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know if you've ever had a teacher or parent or somebody use little, um, I don't like to call like pithy sayings that you end up repeating yourself maybe later on. And for, for me, uh, Dr. Brent Petrie was one of my professors at, at Notre Dame Seminary. <clears throat> and he used to say, he had a saying, when he spoke about uh, Satan's plan for the world, or Satan's intentions, he would always say that Satan um, impales himself on his own plan. He impales himself on his own plan. Essentially, what Satan tries to do is cause a chaos and disorder and disharmony and division and everything that is really uh, antithetical to God. But in the end, God always wins, that he impales himself when he tries to cause, you know, all these different things antithetical to God. And you kind of see that <clears throat> in this as we begin uh, the letter, or excuse me, the book of Job. Of course, many of you are probably familiar with the story of Job and how 
uh, these horrible things, you know, happen to Job. We begin with things just seem to get worse and worse for him, uh, and it is at the hand of Satan, you know, that all these things happen. He loses uh, his livestock, and then finally he loses, uh, you know, his own children. And then later on in the story of Job, we'll see that, that Satan is permitted uh, to touch his flesh, not to take his life, but to touch his flesh. And he has boils all over him, and he, he very very sick. He loses everything. Everything is stripped from him. But we'll hear later on in the, in the story of Job, in the very end, he's actually, uh, what becomes his demise actually ends up becoming um, a, his blessing. And he's actually blessed like tenfold from what he ever had from the very beginning. Today we celebrate uh, two martyrs, um, Saints Cosmos and Damien. And I like to think the story of the martyrs are the same uh, as uh, follow right along in those lines with Dr. Petrie, right? Satan impales himself in his own plan because uh, the martyrs obviously died at the hands of wicked men, died at the hands of those who were most likely influenced by the demonic. Uh, for Cosmos and Damien, it was uh, the early 4th century uh, in Rome, or excuse me, outside of Rome in modern-day Turkey, uh, they died at the hands of the emperor Diocletian because of their faith. And of course, Diocletian, obviously, he had a, uh, there was a, a time and during that time that Christians were uh, martyred and there was a great persecution that happened during that time. So this is right before, really, the fall of the Roman Empire uh, that we have this breakout of, of persecution against Christians. And of course, all of that, you know, again, as St. Paul says, our, our, our real enemy is not against flesh and blood, but against the, the, king, the dark kingdom, the principalities, the, the, the prince of this world, who is Satan. So he's the one that is driving all of this, whether it just be through his influence or through his uh, suggestions. But again, for the martyrs, what happens? You know, what happens? Satan impales himself, right? We have these two great Christian men who are killed, who shed their blood, and from that comes this great devotion through their, their witness to God. And it's through their prayers, intercession, through their inspiration, more and more Christians, or more and more people become Christians, as often says as Tertullian, who's a Tertullian, who is a, a church father, said, you know, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And so you see how Satan impales himself in his own plan. He's trying to cause chaos, killing, murdering Christians, and it ends up becoming his own demise. More Christians come because of that. And of course, the, the, the you know, paramount example of that would be the cross. You know, I always say that it was not God who nailed his son to the cross. It was not God who influenced the Roman soldiers to do that. Uh, but it certainly was Satan. But it was permitted by God. So it's God's permissive will that allows Satan to cause uh, the chaos and to cause the suffering, to cause the disharmony and the division. Satan can't do anything that God does not allow him to do. And you kind of can see notions of that in the beginning of, of the book of Job today. That certainly Satan is on a leash. That's only as long as God allows it to be. But Again, in that, Satan impales himself in his own plans, and we see that again in the cross, right? It is certainly something that becomes, that impales Satan's plan, right? Through his own um, working, it becomes his own demise. And this is how the Lord often works. And it's, for us, it takes a lot of faith. It takes surrender to be able to believe that, especially when suffering happens in our own lives. When God permits suffering to happen in our own lives, that can be very, very, very challenging sometimes to understand, very challenging to see the whole picture. We often can't see the whole picture. And I think that comes again with two things. First, believing in God's omnipotence and his omnipotent will in all things, how God is present in all things, how he's all-powerful and all those, but also, too, that God is good, that God is good, and he does desire uh, for our uh, transformation, our holiness, and ultimately for uh, to be in union with him. And so when we can believe in those two things, no matter what may happen in our own lives, no matter how bad things may get, like Job, 
if we can surrender to that permissive will, if it's something of Satan, obviously, that he will end up impaling himself in the end. And that's our hope. That's the gospel message. That's what gives us uh, our faith. That's what gives us meaning in the midst of all of the, again, the, the darkness, the suffering, the disorder, the division that we often cannot explain or totally understand. It allows us to be able to surrender uh, to God and to come to know him all the more, but also to allow his will to be carried out even in the midst of uh, Satan's plan, if you will. And so today we ask for that grace and for uh, that resolve uh, from these two great martyrs, Saints Cosmas and Damien. Pray for us. Amen. Through the intercession and prayers of Saints Cosmas and Damien, we seek our Lord's grace, his mercy, and forgiveness upon us. We pray, Lord, for our church, especially those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all young people who are discerning of religious vocation to the priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the courage that is expressed and exuded in the martyrs in their laying down the life for the faith, that we may show that same courage in our witness to Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the grace to be able to surrender to your will, despite the challenges and the sufferings that may be permitted by you, only for a greater good. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and for the suffering, especially those in our community. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for um, protection and safety uh, from this hurricane and from all property to be saved and lives to be saved. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the repose of the soul of all those who have passed and for the intention of this Mass this morning. And for the intentions we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, hear our prayers through the prayer intercession of Saints Cosmas and Damien. Give us the resolve to surrender to your will in hopes for, for your glory and honor and for our, for, our, for our faith to grow in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In honor of the, the precious death of your just ones, O Lord, we come to offer that sacrifice from which all martyrdom draws its origin through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> to their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants for whom we now pray. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the, in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy, holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. See how rich is the saint's reward from God. They died for Christ and will live forever.
Let us pray. Preserve in us your gift, O Lord, and may what we have received at your hands as we commemorate the martyrs, saints Cosmos and Damien, bring us healing, salvation, and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a wonderful day today.